welcome back to my channel is Wendy Cellist and um, if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe right now and click the little bell button so that you'll be notified of future videos and if you give it a thumbs up it really helps me out with the algorithm so that more people would get to see these videos that might be helpful and I'm also on Instagram Chalice Wendy Law and also on Facebook so today we're talking about mm, the horrible stories of flying with your instrument, your cello, or whatever it is, and also some tips on how I've flown with the cello. And as well as other instruments, because honestly, I've flown with my friends so many times. You know, as a musician, I have traveled a lot over the years, and I have just about seen it all. But recently, in the news, I heard about these horrible stories like for example the bass player from Cypriot 5 I think his bass got destroyed by TSA and then another musician uh, an African musician with a traditional instrument and his instrument was completely dismantled by TSA so just hearing these stories it really breaks my heart and it really horrifies me. So this video has two purposes. One, I just want to bring this into like the mass consciousness and awareness about how fragile and precious instruments are and how they need to be treated with love and respect. At least respect. And I think a lot of it, it has to do with people not knowing. Just, they just never learned that instruments are so valuable. For example, my instrument, many of you may know, is 200 years old. So it cannot be flown under like some people. You know, this one, it's so precious. You know, you, you can't replace an instrument, really. You can fix it, maybe, if it's not destroyed too badly during transport when you fly, but an instrument cannot be replaced. When you put an instrument underneath, like in a baggage, First of all, it gets banged around a lot. And furthermore, they put it in a place where temperature would kind of ruin the instrument because instruments like this one, which is 200 years old, is temperature sensitive. So if it's too dry, if it's too cold, you know, or too hot, the, the glue will melt and and the seams can open if it's too hot. And if it's too cold and too dry, then you can create cracks. So obviously when you put it under, you know, they don't handle necessarily with care. In terms of handling an instrument, it's very, very specific. For example, some people may not know that for the cello, you cannot put the bridge part in the bottom. It has to always face up or you have to put the cello on side. Some of these things people are just not aware and they don't know how to take care of it. That's why for me, flying with the cello, I always have to buy a seat or whoever is hiring me always buys the cello a seat. But of course the frustrating thing is, you know, we're spending the exact same amount as a person on the plane. There are a lot of airlines, even with a plane ticket, I have gotten kicked out. And this was years ago, maybe things are different now, but I've definitely gotten kicked off on American Airlines and United Airlines. United is the worst. I would never, never ever fly United. It's absolutely horrible. I now only fly with Delta. With Delta, as long as you buy a plane ticket online, as long as the flight attendants and the people who work there see that it has a ticket, you just go on and I've never really had problems with Delta. But I've heard a lot of horror stories with international soloists flying from Europe with European airlines where they get kicked off the plane, even with a plane ticket. I know that this has happened recently also, it was in the news, so it's kind of frustrating. And a lot of people are like, well, can we get a flight case? Well, the thing is, even with a flight case, you're still dealing with whoever, you're at the mercy of whoever is handling the instrument or not handling the instrument. And I have heard horror stories where a friend of mine actually had one of those big Stevenson cases and it's supposed to be really sturdy and she saw that that case was literally in the middle of the runway in 90 degree weather just sitting there and she saw it and there was nothing she could do. I mean, I do have my fun travel story. Sometimes things are really good, um, like, or sometimes things could be really bad when they're bad. Like I get kicked off the plane several times. It's very, very stressful. I've been asked to always sit in the back of the 
plane, even though I'm like, why? You know, I bought a seat. I bought two seats actually. But there was one time years ago when I was performing with the Singapore Symphony, I was performing the Saint Saëns Cello Concerto. The plane had some regulation where the cello, it could not be in the economy seat. So they ended up moving me and the cello to first class. Now that was nice. Singapore Airline is a really, really nice airline. Plus it was a long flight. So I fully enjoyed that experience, but that doesn't always happen. But the worst case scenario is when, you know, you travel with the cello and if TSA wants to open it, Ugh, that can get a little dicey. I do have some tips to for cellists in particular, but also other instrumentalists. Tip number one, always get to the airport early. So you can check in early, you can go through security so that you don't have to stress. Sometimes people don't know what the cello is or instruments and the TSA wants to open it and examine it and do this and that and they will argue that it's not going to go through the conveyor belts, you know, all types of things. So just get there way early. And if you can, I would definitely suggest getting TSA Pre and I also have Clear. I personally find it a lot less stressful because already when I'm traveling, I'm dealing with a suitcase, a carry-on, a cello, a backpack. I have to take out my laptop and then I have to take off my jacket and then have to take care of cello and usually when I'm traveling with let's say my ensemble or something I always have someone go in front of me so that's a tip maybe tip number two <laughs> and then that way when the cello goes through the conveyor belt they can pick it up first if you're traveling with someone have someone go in front of you so that they can pick up the cello so that it doesn't just sit, stand there or sit there and somebody may knock it off. Number three, if you are, let's say, a violinist or a violist, I know sometimes you guys have trouble. Um, what I've noticed is that people who travel with their violin, if they have one of those backpack and they put it upright so that it's just right behind their back, you don't even see that you're carrying some things. A lot of my friends get away with it as like not a carry-on and not run into any issues with airlines when they just put it in the back like that. Definitely do that if you're a violinist or a violist. When I get through security, I go straight to my gate and I go straight to the gate agent. I right away let them know that I'm traveling with the cello. I, I always did that to make sure that they're aware so that they can make necessary adjustments. Sometimes it's even better to call ahead of time. It's better that they know so that they're prepared. If they're prepared, they might actually seat you in a seat that's not gonna affect anyone else. So I always go there and just be super, super duper nice. The nicer you are, you know, the more easygoing it is and, and easier for them to accommodate you. So I just try to be like super nice and let them know that I have a seat with a cello. And a lot of times what ends up happening, not only do they try to give me more room by giving me like a row free sometimes, that's what they used to do, not anymore recently, but in the past they did that. Um, they also let me pre-board, which is so great. And if you're traveling with your band or your ensemble, everybody that have an instruments, if the cellist can pre-board, they usually let my entire team pre-board with me. So definitely, do that so talk to the gate agent right away so that they can help prepare i definitely do not recommend traveling with a soft case no 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 <laughs> i know maybe some guitarists do and they feel like they can fit you can try and sometimes i know some guitarists fit their guitars in the closet when the flight attendants let them do that and that's great, but if you're a cellist or finalist, violist, you just run the risk of having it ruined, having your instrument ruined. Because if you have to fit it overboard and there are other suitcases and other things that crash on top of it during flight, then you're like in trouble with your instrument. So I don't recommend it. I really always recommend traveling with a hard case. There are certain airlines, they call the cello CBBG. So that you really have to call ahead and let them know because they have this whole procedure where they strap down that cello with like a big bag and if they won't fly you if you don't have that bag over the cello with like this, the, the, all the straps and they have like special people come up tie the whole thing down they make a big freaking deal so you have to just sort of find out the policies 
of your airline so you have to let them know it's not one of those situations where you can just buy a ticket online put like cello and then your last name because that's what i do with um delta one time i flew um with kathy pacific and they didn't know that was cello for whatever reason and they did not have the bag like they have a special bag that they put the whole cello in and then strap it onto the seat they just didn't fly me i had to fly the next day yeah definitely check with the airline some of the airlines that I have flown with in the US include Delta, it's okay, American, it's probably okay if you, you call ahead of time, Southwest is good, JetBlue is good, United is terrible. Those are the ones that as long as you have a ticket, they don't care. So yeah, one time I flew with my cello and <sighs> I was young then and I was playing a concerto in Hong Kong. So I flew from Boston, I was living in Boston back then, to Hong Kong and I didn't even have a flight case, I just had a pretty sturdy case and I packed it really well and that's what they told me to do, you know, you kind of loosen the strings supposedly. When I took out my case and took out the cello, it was like there was this big, big crack and then it had to go into emergency repair before my concerto, I was so nervous. It was not, it was terrible because it was, I was really young, it was like one of my first time playing concerto. So I learned my lesson. I never do that again. Um, it's just an investment for cellos. And you know, for me traveling with a group, I always just split the cello cost with the entire group. So that's something you should consider doing too as a cellist. I've done that with all my groups. It's only fair. It sh the cello should not have to bear the entire cost when the whole ensemble is playing. And also when you're booking concerts and negotiating fees, definitely bear in mind the travel cost for the cello. It is just what it is. Let me know if you have any questions in terms of travel and whether you found my tips helpful. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. That really helps me out with the algorithm. If you want to support my work, you can become a patron on Patreon. You can donate as much and as little as you want. So definitely check that out. I would really appreciate your support. And of course, you can also support me by purchasing my album or just watching my album, Passion. So thank you again. See you next time. Bye.